Let's move on to our fifth and final main topic today. And our fifth and final main topic today gets submitted to us by Yosef Silver, who writes, Greetings and salutations, everyone. I know John is a fan of Josh Trank, so I was just wondering if you saw his comments about Fantastic Four. Apparently, he wanted to cast a Black Sioux Storm and Fox wouldn't let him. I personally liked the adopted angle of it, but what do you think? Would the movie have been significantly better if Sue Storm had been black like Johnny was? All right. Thanks a lot for sending that question in, man. And it is crazy that for whatever reasons in different ways at different times, as as bad as it was, and I don't think, fanta- by the way, I don't think Josh Trank's Fantastic Four was like the worst movie we've ever seen. It was better than I thought it would be. It was still bad. It was still bad. But it was better than I thought it would be. I, I've told this story before, but I remember, you know, um, going to the Fox lot and going to watch the first screening of Fantastic Four, which, by the way, was only like 24 hours before the review embargo left. So we all automatically knew, okay, so this movie's going to be bad, right? It's, Fox knows this movie is bad. That's why they're only showing it to us like 24 hours before the movie comes out fine. And we all heard about how much drama had went into uh, the movie getting made. And we heard all the drama of this and all the drama of that. And it just left us all thinking like, this is going to be a total train wreck. And I remember I I was sitting beside Christian Harloff uh, in the theater and we got about a half hour into the movie. And I remember we looked at each other confused and we said, this isn't all that bad. I mean, it wasn't great, but, but like in the first act of the film, we looked at each other and we're like, this isn't terrible. Like this, this honestly isn't all that bad. It wasn't all that great, but it wasn't all that bad. So anyway, there, then of course the next two acts basically fell apart. Anyway, here we are years later. And for some reason, somehow, some way, I can't explain it. We're still talking about that Fantastic Four movie, which is kind of crazy to me. But Josh Trank uh, recently did an interview with, I mean, with, with current events being there. I actually did an interview with uh, RB3, did an interview with Robert Butler III. Uh, this comes to us from the website of Geeks of Color. And he did an interview with Josh Trank in which he revealed something kind of interesting. And that was this. This is Josh Trank speaking. There were a lot of controversial conversations that were had behind the scenes on that, Trank said, talking about the Sue Storm and Fantastic Four and the casting. I was mostly interested in a Black Sue Storm and a Black Johnny Storm and a Black Franklin Storm. But also, when you're dealing with a studio on a massive movie like that, Everybody wants to keep an open mind too, like who the big stars are going to be. Maybe it's going to be Margot Robbie or something like that. But when it came down to it, I found that a lot of pretty heavy, I found a lot of pretty heavy pushback on casting a a black woman in that role. So that's uh, one of the comments that came up as a result of that, which, which is, is interesting. Now he actually went on to say other things as well. Let me bring up this other thing that he said, said as well, which I think is worth mentioning at this point at any rate. He said, when I look back on that, this is still, um, this is still um, uh, Josh Trank speaking. When I look back on that, I should have just walked when, I, when the realization sort of hit me. And I feel embarrassed about that, that I didn't just out of principle, like quit the job out of principle. Because those aren't the values I stand for in my life. Those weren't the values or even for me, uh, because I'm somebody who always talks about standing up for what I believe in, even if it means burning my career out. I feel bad that I didn't take it to the mat with that issue. I feel like I failed in that regard. All right, so let's let's go to the bigger picture on this and go back to the question that you asked. Number one, should we be surprised that there was pushback on the issue of casting a black actress for Fantastic Four? No. But the main reason I think we shouldn't be surprised by that is because, you know, 70% of the time, the studio will give the director pushback on what they want to do with casting. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't work out. I'm sure a lot of times it does. But directors always get pushback on their casting choices and casting decisions. There's always pushback. So am I surprised on one level that there was pushback on that? No, I'm not surprised. On that level, I'm not surprised. Now, look, I'm going to say something that I have said for years, going back to the movie blog days, and I'm going to warn you all, it's going to upset all of you. You are all 
going to dislike what I'm going to have to say. You can all in unity join hands and join together in disliking what I'm about to say. Because what I'm about to say, uh, nobody ever likes. Nobody ever likes what I'm going to have to say. But I'm just telling you my honest opinion of it. When it comes to the race of characters, particularly comic book uh, characters, but almost anything. When it comes to the race of characters and what do I think about them using an Asian person in this role, a white person in that role, a black person in that role, whatever. My opinion has always been, and everybody disagrees with me, has always been, unless the ethnicity of the character is a core essential part of the DNA of who that character is and our understanding of that character is. For example, King T'Challa of Wakanda. That, that's part of the DNA, the whole background of that character. You can't have, you know, a European, um, you can't have an Asian dude, you can't have a white dude, you, can, you, you can't. It's just the part of the baked in DNA of who that character is. And it's an important part of who that character is and our fundamental understanding of that character is. That character's got to be played by a black actor. There, there, are, there are white characters, I think, listen, understanding the Caucasian background and heritage of that character is key and essential to who and what that character is. Or an Asian character, that, that's a key and essential to who that character is. My opinion has always been, and everybody hates this, is that unless you can make an argument to me, and there are examples where you can, that the ethnicity of a character in a movie is on a DNA level directly encoded into who and what that character is and our basic fundamental understanding of what that character is and represents and their background and who they are, then I don't care. I remember back when Daredevil was coming out and they decided to get Michael Clark Duncan to play Daredevil and a whole bunch of people got really upset that they were doing that. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I, I mean, I, I don't care. Michael Clark Duncan, oh, R.I.P. Michael Clark Duncan. I love Michael Clark Duncan. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan's a great actor. I love him. He's fantastic. He's going to be, and by the way, I don't care what anybody says about that Daredevil movie. I thought Michael Clark Duncan was a great Daredevil. Ah, Daredevil. I thought he was a great Kingpin. I thought he was a great Kingpin. The, the point was, Kingpin, to me, and again, I am, I'm not trying to convince you. I'm telling you, I'm trying to explain to you why I have the position I have. Kingpin to me being white or black or Asian or Eastern Europe, it, it didn't matter. None of that was any part of my core essential understanding of the fundamentals on a DNA level of who that character is. The color of the skin didn't change anything of that to me. So I didn't mind. I don't care. When, they, when I found out that Michael B. Jordan was going to be playing Johnny Storm, the same thought. Okay, great. Michael B. Jordan is a world-class actor. So I don't care. There's nothing about the Johnny Storm character, except for the fact that he's always been portrayed as being white. There's nothing about his character when you read his history that makes it fundamentally important that that ethnicity stays. So when they announced that Michael B. Jordan was going to be playing Johnny Storm, I'm like, oh, right on. Michael B. Jordan's an amazing actor. Fantastic. Because it wasn't long after that we saw Fruitvale Station that that was announced. And I'm like, yeah, damn right. Michael B. Jordan played. That's going to be great. And then, of course, they had Franklin played, uh, was uh, played by a black actor as well. And so they decided to take the approach of, you know what, let's throw in an adoption angle on this. So let's change those two characters and let's keep this one character the same. And so, and we changed the background story that there's an adoption level to that. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I thought bringing in the adoption angle on that, it gave me a greater appreciation. And again, I'm only speaking for myself. It gave me a greater appreciation for the dynamic and the relationship between Johnny and Sue. But that's just me. It may not have done that for you. And if it didn't, that's perfectly fine. Am I surprised that Fox gave pushback um, to Josh Trank about wanting to change Sue Storm's ethnicity to black? Yeah, a little, maybe, but I'll tell you what I'm more surprised at, especially given everything today. I'm more surprised that Fox 
when Josh Trank said, I want Franklin to be a black character and I want Johnny to be a black character, I'm more surprised that Fox said, sure, go ahead and do that. Maybe that's me being, you know, maybe I'm just being overly pessimistic and I'm overly skeptical, but I got to tell you to this day, I am still surprised, pleasantly surprised. I am still to this day surprised that they let him change Johnny and Franklin. I'm surprised they did. I thought it worked, but I'm still surprised that they did. And again, maybe that's just me being overly critical, overly skeptical, overly pessimistic. Maybe very much could be the case. Could be, but I honestly don't see from my limited perspective, from my limited perspective, I, I don't see why Josh Trank, who I like very much, by the way, I, I like Josh Trank very much. I don't see why he would use language with, I should have quit the job over. And it's like, dude, listen, if you can go to the person paying your check and get two thirds of what you were asking for, that's, that's a pretty good win. Like if you walk into your boss's office and you say, I got a list of three demands. And they actually give on two of them say, okay, you know what? We'll give you one and we'll give you three, but we're not going to give you two. I, I think you take that as a win. I don't know. And again, that's just coming from my limited perspective. I'm sure there are perspectives that I'm not looking at from that. If I did, maybe it would change my view on it. It, it might, it very well could. That's a beautiful thing about life. We learn new lessons. We change our perceptions. I mean, that's, that's life. Life changes and evolves. But right now I'm still kind of in this place of, I don't care. Like, I just, I just don't understand when I, when I see people get all mad that Michael B. Jordan's playing Johnny Storm. I'm like, wh why are you mad? What is there about Johnny Storm, the character that you probably don't even know much about, but what is there for those of you who do know a lot about him? What is there about the character that is, makes it essential from a narrative point of view that this character has to be white? Has to be white. It's just not the Johnny Storm character if it's not. I don't think you can make that argument. You can make that argument for some characters. I do not think you can make that argument for the Johnny Storm character. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. That, But I got to apply that rule both ways. I didn't see anything watching you know, Fantastic Four. I didn't see anything in Fantastic Four that made me feel that within the, the context of this movie, on a narrative DNA level, Sue Storm has to be either white or black. I, I didn't see anything that necessitated from a narrative perspective that that one character be white or black. And so I have no problem that they kept her white any more than I had any problem that they made Johnny Storm black. To me, you had two great performers, right? You had Kate Mara. You had, um, I'm trying to remember that who, oh damn, why am I freezing on the name of the guy who played Frank Franklin, who was also in House of Cards and he was amazing in that. Oh, oh, I'm freezing on the name of the guy who played Franklin. Anyway, but then you also had Johnny Storm, right? So you had Sue and Johnny adopted. Great. Fabulous. What's wrong? I, I, I don't know. So that's, that's just for me. Now, as far as the question of would it have improved the movie? If Michael B. Jordan as Johnny Storm was playing opposite a black actress playing Sue Storm, no. It certainly would have made, wouldn't have made the movie any worse. I don't think it would have made the movie any better. Look, the fundamental problems with Fantastic Four and all the drama that went on behind the scenes, those things were still there. Wouldn't have made a difference. I don't think it would have made a difference, honestly. At least not a material difference. I don't think it would have made it any worse. I don't think it would have practically made it any better. And because I don't think it would have made it any materially worse or materially any better, because it really doesn't essentially change anything about the story, I then don't think it becomes that big of an issue to discuss. If we were talking about an issue for, say, that I think could have fundamentally changed the course of that movie from being a bad film to a really good film, well, then it becomes more important. When it doesn't have that, when the topic we're discussing, I don't think offers that type of course change. I don't know that that I care that much and I don't know that it makes that much of a difference or is all that important. But again, this is for this specific set of circumstances. I still thought it was a really interesting answer though. I thought it was a really interesting answer and it gives it gives us a little bit more of a look into how complicated and rough 
that entire Fantastic Four movie even started off with. That it even started off with a conversation between a director and the studio about a casting decision that nearly made the director go, well, then I'm, then I'm quitting. Then I'm out. That's how rocky this project started off. That's how rough this project started off. So I still think that's interesting. Anyway, it's a fascinating interview. I encourage you all to go and check it out in full. Uh, so yeah, there's that question is, guys, what do you think about that? Do you think it could have fundamentally made the movie any better or any worse? Do you think Josh Trank did the right thing by hanging in there at the moment? Do you think maybe he should have said, no, if you're not going to let me make this character what I want it to be, I'm going to walk. How do you feel about that? Do you think maybe there needed to be a little bit of compromise? I don't know. Jump down to the comments section below and let me know your thoughts. All right, guys.